Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your hands to heaven and create a funnel. I'm going to pray for us that God will fill your funnel as it narrows down into your heart. The hands represent the outer portion of a funnel. And we lift them up and let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, every funnel that is represented in this place and those that are streaming, that you would pour out from the portals of heaven the power, the anointing and healing virtue, God, that is needed in that heart, in that home, in that marriage. God, we open up ourselves to you to pour into us with fresh oil, fresh fire, a revelation and an anointing, God, that we have not seen before. But today, God, begins a new journey, Lord. Completely fill us up. Fill this house. Fill the church. Fill those that are here today. I command it with apostolic authority to be so in the name of Jesus. Now, if you receive that, put your hands together. Give him an offering of praise and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Ha! Huh. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. While you're standing, Revelation chapter 2, our continued series of renewed. One verse in your hearing, I'll let you be seated. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Nevertheless, I'll address the nevertheless. I, who's speaking here? I'll talk about that. Because thou, who is thou? We'll talk about that. But I want to preach to you. I want to speak to you. I want to fill you today with a renewed love. A renewed love. Heavenly Father, again, I ask you to help me to flow in the Spirit. I pray, God, that every heart would lean into the Holy of Holies, every life, every situation, and that our love for you is renewed. Our passion is renewed. Our motivation is renewed. I pray that you'd anoint me, anoint them to hear a prophetic word, anoint them to hear a rhema, a revelation, an illumination in the spirit today. Let us not be distracted. I ask this to be so in Jesus' name. If you receive it, would you shout amen? Amen, amen, amen. God bless you for standing this morning. You may be seated. What an amazing move of God's Spirit that has been in this place. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm glad you're here. Those of you that are streaming, you could not be here for various reasons. I'm glad you could leverage technology. Maybe in some cases you may watch an archive, but nevertheless, the word of the Lord goes forth every week from this pulpit to change and inspire lives. I'm talking to you this morning about a renewed love. When we love something or we love someone, I think that we are eager to talk about it. How often do we talk about the things of God? I say if your answer is a little, maybe it's because the things of this world has moved in and got a little closer to your heart. Just before the crucifixion, the Bible tells us that Peter loses his love for Jesus as he denies him three times. Peter may be distraught, defeated, dejected, he and the disciples go back to the fishing after Jesus' death. He protests against the little girl. But when Jesus shows back up on the beach, Peter is quick to join him. Jesus reinstates Peter by asking him three times if he loves him. Jesus reminds him that their love for one another can be renewed. If we renew our love for God, it will play out because God is reaching for us. I'm talking this morning about a renewed love. I understand in the 21st century, and probably even more so in Southern California, the business and our lifestyle, that it's very easy, I'm going to say, to get on the treadmill of life and just run like a hamster. 
and forget about the things that were most important to us when we came to God. I think the longer I live, Brother Foster, the, when you start to figure things out, if you're not careful, you can serve God on autopilot. And you lean a little bit onto your own understanding, although the Scripture tells us don't do that, but it tells us that for a reason, because people do that. Did you catch that? I want you to think about this. Where my time, attention, energies, and affections are spent reveals what I love most. That's been preached long before my day, but I think as a pastor of an admonition to come back and remind us that the things that you love arrest and attracts your attention, your heartbeat, or you're spending your money. Those are things that are representation of what I love. I want you to think about feel for a minute. My love for God must exceed my love for anything else. I feel God is more important. I feel God deserves this. I feel that I should, and then we begin to make adjustments. And then at the beginning of my message to do, begin new rituals, practices that foster a love relationship with God. Again, I, I want to submit to you this morning, in the busyness of life, our love and our passion, our aggression towards God taking us out of darkness and putting us into His marvelous light can wane some when we think we do pretty good. But then we have to ask ourselves the question, how am I doing compared to my first love I had with God? Revelations, he says that you've lost something. I have something against you. I don't know about you, but if God told me face to face, I have something against you, that would startle me and break my heart. If I actually heard God tell me that, I think anybody that we love in this life, if they told us, I have something against you, or maybe in modern terminology, I say, you know what, you've disappointed me in an area. If you love that person, that cuts deep, and that's crushing. And you didn't realize that they were disappointed. I think most of the time we disappoint someone, we lose the love, as the Scripture says. I don't think that it's done intentionally, but I think it's done by the busyness of life. Things that got us to where we are today, it's going to take more to get us to where God wants us to go because there's an onslaught of things that are pushing back on us in this day and age. And so I'm coming to you this morning about a renewed Love. You see, in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus promises that he's going to give us a full and blessed life so that the enemy doesn't steal it from us. He's come to give us life. But God said it this way, I've come to give you life more abundantly. So I conclude, you can have life, but can you live it and get it and obtain it more abundantly without God? Absolutely not. So you say, well, I live life. Yeah, but there's a better life. I live life, there's a more abundant life. I live life, there's a more peaceful life. There's always something greater that God can do and will do compared to what you can do on your own. Come on, somebody, help me preach. Mm. That what you can do on your own, because it's all man-made and manufactured, but God says, I can give you a better life. I can give you a better ma marriage. I can give you a better relationship with your kids. Mm -hmm. A renewed love. Through the enemy, he tries to steal, kill, and destroy. For this to be true in us, we must experience a renewal if he's going to give us a brand new life. And today I want to look at the renewed love that God wants to develop in your life towards him. And when we love something, we're eager to tell people about it. We're eager to share about the energy and we expend time towards whatever we think is great, and in the amount of energy and effort of people, they do that when you go to sporting events because it's their team. How many of you are following the NBA playoffs? Okay, let me back up. Does anybody know what the NBA stands for? <laughs> well, in the natural, it's called in National Basketball Association. My point is, to the 4% that know that, they paint themselves up. All right, go to football, whatever your sport is, okay? Lacrosse, cricket, lawn bowling, bocce ball, okay? The point is you're cheering for your team and you're not embarrassed. 
And there are things that people love as well. Let me invite you to stand if these things are the things that you love. Let me step out. If you love these things, you stand. If you like cats. Okay. Okay, all right, hey, stay standing, stay standing, okay? If you love pizza, oh, I, I invite you to stand. Again, we're talking about things we love. Okay? Now, I, I don't want to be cynical, but some of you look like you really love pizza. But anyway, let me move on. Sushi. No, stay, stay. If you're already standing, stay standing. Okay. What, what, about, what about the beach? If you love the beach, I want you to stand up. And I, I've saved my favorite for last, morning coffee. Now, 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 look around. For, if you're not standing, what do you love? Dear Lord, have mercy. Some of you spirits say, you didn't put a picture of Jesus up, so I didn't stand. Okay, I didn't think that spiritual for my illustration. You may be seated. Thank you guys for humoring me. Clearly, we do not agree today on what is worthy of our love and our affection. But I hope that we can agree that the love for God is worthy for our love and our affection and the things that we find ourselves doing and that we would and should be eager to share the love with people around us. Why? Because there's something about the love of God that's universal, and I'm going to say it this way, that's scalable. Amen. You can say, I'm 62 years old. I've been in church my whole life. I'm a third-generation Pentecostal pastor. My grandkids are a fifth-generation Pentecostal kids. The point is, you can say, this is my first Sunday. The love of God is scalable. It reaches my grandkids, and it reaches you. There's something about God. The other loves that we stood about, in my opinion, are not scalable. Some of those pictures I would have sat down on. No, I don't love sushi. I tap out at California rolls after about four, then I go, oh, I can't do no more. And my wife says, that's not sushi. Whatever. Okay, give me some miso soup. The point is we have different loves and likes. And I think when somebody loves something, it should be obvious. When we love God, it should be obvious by the way we live, by the things we do, the things we say. Hey, can I insert this? The way we dress. Mm. Why, I love God because I'm pleasing God. I'm not pleasing what the world is accepting. I'm speaking my voice unto God. I'm not talking like the world talks. When, when we love something, we have no problem supporting it. Why? Because I love it. I love this. And it means that our actions and our thoughts are, are dedicated and predicated by this love. I love God. So I come on Sunday mornings. I get up early. I get excited. Nobody has to coerce me. I, I make my personal schedule around God's schedule. Why? Because I love being in the house of God. I love being with God's people. And God's love motivates me to get where he is. Mm. means that all other things in life pale in comparison to the love of God. And when I have a properly place love for God. It's better equipped that I can love him back. And watch this, I can love others as well. Again, we're talking about a renewed love. And you can say, oh, I, I love God. I love the people around us. But is it possible today that your love needs to be renewed? Is it possible that your spirit needs a renewed affection? Again, this is what I know. The longer we own something, the less excited we are about it. Now, I don't have little kids anymore, but when I had little kids and I got a new car, how many said, no eating or drinking in the car? I'm thirsty, too bad. We'll be home in 20 minutes. I'm hungry, too bad. And so we would force that. Why? This is a brand new car, man. 
But if I left out this morning and, and checked the cars going out of the parking lot, how many French fries am I going to find in the back seat? Smashed up soda cans and cups. And, hey, hey, what happened to no eating in the car? Oh, that was 10 years ago. Yeah, this car's old beater. Oh, you don't love it no more? You see, what my, my point is, the longer we're attached to something, if we're not careful, we're not as careful and not affectionate about it, and we don't care quite as much. Well, hello. It's the same way with things in this world, and it's the same way with relationships. And if we're not careful in our marriages, the longer your marriage, the less you can fall in love because you get into a rhythm of just living your life with another person. I feel like I'm hearing too many that's truths. I don't want to look in any direction, so I'm going to look straight ahead. Amen. <clears throat> you see, let me get back to my scripture in the final book. There's a prophetic word of warning that's issued to the church at Ephesus. With all the good things that the church in Ephesus was doing, they were forgetting something that seems insignificant to them, but it was very important to God. They had forgotten. They had left their first love. They had neglected the passion of the original that was displayed when they came. They had lost their zeal. They had lost their motivation. Other things occupied their affection and clouded their judgment and their love to God. So there was an, uh, things between them and God. Oh, I love God. Well, what about these things between you and God? They're called obstruction obstacles. And then when I want to love God, I got to go around those. Most of the time, we don't have the energy to go around them, so we just let them hang out between God and I, or maybe my first love. That's why I'm preaching this morning about a renewed love. I think all of us need to reassess, hey, where's God? Where's my affection? Where's my attitude? Where's my spirit? Where's my ambitions? And then where this? Now, where is God in all of this? You see, I think the purpose of my message here, Brother Foster, is we need to establish, here's my love for God. And then my ambitions and my future and my desires and my calendars and my coming and goings go around God. But if we're not careful, this becomes a part of the solar system and I'm the sun and everything evolves around me, including God. Hello, can I preach for a minute? And then I build my life in my solar system, but I'm always the sun and everything orbits around what I want to do, what I think is right, what I want. Mm. So I'm saying let God be the source of our solar system. And then our, when we renew our love, some of you, listen to me, may have to go on the outskirts of your solar system and find God again and bring him back and say, you know what? We're going to rearrange these planets because somehow the planets in the sun got out of order and I'm bringing the most important thing back into my life. What do you mean? I know God, yeah, but you've lost your first love. And you need to realign your solar system. Heaven and earth shall pass away, the Bible says. But my word, he's never going to pass away. The things of this life, the things that we're working with, the things that are so important to us right now, the Bible says eventually that passes away. But you know what? This doesn't. That's not degrading. That's not making things unimportant. Everything's important in our life. I think everything in my life is important or else I wouldn't put it in my life. But it doesn't mean that it can be center stage and I begin to build a life around what I think is important. Because sometimes, Brother Foster, God and the Word of God think some other things are important than what humanity thinks. What we as people of God think. We saw that with the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. They didn't all make it. They weren't all committed and submitted. They begin to rearrange things. Yeah, hey, I'm leaving Egypt. Well, I'm going with Moses. But, hey, when we get over there, man, I'm cutting and running. I got some things I got to do. Well, what if you don't get over there? All I'm talking about to all of us, probably most of us are saved in the house. But what we struggle with to maintain sustainable love for God. And God's just coming to you this morning through a pastor saying, hey, what about your love? Is it possible that you need to renew your love? Why? Because a love neglected is a love lost. Yes. Yes. If I neglect it, he eventually deteriorates. 
If you neglect your body, your body will deteriorate health-wise. If you neglect the landscaping of your yard, it deteriorates. So I've got to make sure as I live this life and I walk through here that, that I don't neglect my love for the things of God, for the house of God, for the word of God, for the people of God, for the man of God. There's a lot of things for God, but if I'm not careful, I can replace that with other things that I think that are, watch me now, are important at this moment. Again, everything's important, Brother Tony. But do they take center stage and God gets shoved aside? Does God become on the peripheral or the bleachers and I'm playing the game by myself with what I think is important? People do that all the time. That's where Proverbs 3, 5 comes in. It tells us, do not learn, lean on your own understanding. Translated, don't play your own ball game. Don't quarterback your own team. But keep God in the middle and build what you want to build. Get your education. Buy what you want to buy. Go where you want to go. But make sure as you're moving around, this is still the centerpiece of how I'm building and living a life because that's a love renewed. Someone shout amen. amen. Relationship with God is sometimes neglected. And again, I feel like the longer you might live for God, the more you get a little, I got this. The real test of a marriage takes place years after they say, I do. Maybe you've been a Christian for some time and you remember what it was like when you first loved God. You were excited. You talked about God a lot. You thought about God a lot. You read your Bible. You prayed. But somewhere along the way, the relationship with God becomes old news and other things took priority or taken priority. Then you know what? You've lost your first love. Sin begins to creep in and our loss and our love for God begins to diminish. The, the, the purpose of my message this morning is, is, is not to rock your world, but I ask you to assess your life and where is God in the middle of everything that I do? Is God the sun in my solar system? Perhaps, perhaps you lost your first love. Now, for someone to tell you that is kind of hard to take. You could be offended. But sometimes people get offended when the statement is true. Now, I get it. I could be offended if the statement is false. But if we're talking about God and talking about your soul and we're talking about a renewed love, you got to ask yourself, And hey, in light of the message this morning, do I need to renew my love with God? You say, well, I'm not sure. Well, go back to when you first came in contact with God. How did you feel, think, and live? Are you still mirroring that lifestyle that you were 8, 10, 12, 30 years ago? Are you still, I'm going to say, flying at that level? Sister Ashley did an amazing job last Sunday, and I come up here a little intimidated, but... She mentioned about the first love. I feel like God showed me. Let me read the scripture again here. Here we go. Okay. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left Thy first love, that's King James. The revelation I got that she mentioned last Sunday, if you weren't here, and let me slow it down, is, you see, he was hurt with the church in Ephesus. Revelation, there's seven churches of Asia. This happens to be the one, Revelations chapter 2. You left your first love. And I think a lot of us preach and think you lost your first love. Okay, that's kind of what she brought in last week. But when I leave my first love, I walk away from it. And something replaces it. And watch me now. Now this becomes my first love, but I still love God. What I've done is I've flip-flopped these. 
this used to be my first love. I leave that, and then I replace it with something else. What? Career? Ambition? Family? Chasing money? Chasing retirement? All those things in themselves are not bad. They're not sin. Unless you left your first love for this. Basically, to simplify, anything that separates me from God is sin. Well, I'm just trying to carve out a career, Pastor. So you're saying don't work? I'm saying if your relationship with God is diminished because of that, get another job. Because when I leave my first love, I left it, it's still on my love list. But it's not the first love on my list. Maybe I got three loves. I got five. I'm not talking about ladies. I'm just talking about I, some of you are like, whoa, pastor, you freak me out. I like to ride motorcycles. I like to have walks with my wife. Wink, wink. I enjoy that. I like it when she makes me a birthday taco dinner. I only have a birthday once a year, but oh well. These are, there's things that we love. And so if God was my first love and I've got, I'm chasing other things, not sin, unless it replaces my first love. And then sin always separates God. There's a gap. There's a space, a cavity. And the longer I chase this, the bigger the gap becomes. You see, I used to could do both. I love God, and I love my career. I'm committed. I'll come after work. I'm dead dog tired. I'll come dirty. I'll do whatever. I'll take a shower at home. I'm, work. You, I, you, I, you're, I'm here, Pastor, no matter what. But I'm chasing. I'm going to make a better life for my family. I'm going to, we're going to go. I get it. I bless you. Goo, goo, do, do. Go, go, go. But when you start to get this over here, and then, you know what? You know what? I had to work overtime. I'm not going to make it on first Wednesday in June because they told me we're going to have 10 hour days. Something's slipping. What? I thought you loved God. I do. I'm going to be there Sunday. Don't you worry about that. Settle down, Pastor. <laughs> Simplify your life. Take a deep breath. Calm down. But my problem is the gap seems to often get bigger unless we're preached back to shrink in the gap. The ultimate is it becomes like this. But how many among us, maybe you live like this. I didn't lose my first love. Well, well, it's not in the same position it used to be, although I know you can touch it. So my message, my pastor heartbeat is simply say, hey, we need to refocus. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some of you do. Maybe some of you don't. Yeah. But if you don't, you owe it to yourself to assess your first love. Yeah. Grade yourself. That's right. Look into your life. I'm going to say look into your solar system. And, and what is circling the sun? Who's the sun in your life? Maybe there's reasons that we have forgot our first love. Maybe we've gotten lazy. Maybe we've got a love for sin. Maybe we're disappointed in God. The truth is that many of us today can relate to Peter. We know what it is that he loved Jesus. But when he kept Jesus at arm's length, How many of us can relate to Peter? I love you, Lord. I'm going to go with you. We're not going to leave you, God. Where would we go? Pretty convincing. It's compelling. I mean, this guy's sold out. Just takes a little girl to ask him a question. Are you one question away from losing your first love? One question. Oh, you're like Jesus. You t I saw you with him. In our home church, before we moved up here, my wife and I were in a Target. There was a single mother, and she had a little three- or four-year-old boy. 
Now, I didn't see them. We were just walking through Target. I was, and they told us that Sunday at that church that the little boy told her mother because he must have saw the pastor as Jesus, and I was on the pastoral staff. He says, Mom, there's Jesus' friend. <laughs> I know, that's kind of cute, huh? How many of you would be accused of being a friend of Jesus? Walking through Target. What are you saying? I'm just simply saying, I may have to rearrange my solar system. All the planets are good. Most of the time, we're spiritual enough and holy enough to choose what is right. I'm not preaching to some people. I'm not doing a new a new converts, a newcomers class, and hey, now this is Jesus, and Jesus doesn't like this. And let me tell you, if you ever do this, Jesus is going to get mad. And you don't like it when Jesus is mad. I mean, he curses fig trees. He swallows up people on the earth. I mean, these are real. Ooh, no, I'm not, pe- I'm not speaking to people. I'm speaking to people that love God. I'm not challenging. I'm not contesting your love. I'm just saying, hey, where in the scope of I love God has the rest of your life been built? And did you leave your first love? Again, on the love list, God is still there. Maybe he's number two. But I think we owe it to ourselves to drill down and, and, and make sure that our hearts are right. So if God's going to move in the apostolic environment, then he's going to move where there are pure hearts, dedicated, apostolic, sold-out people that are craving and hungry for a move of God, not people that are wishy-washy, <laughs> straddling light and darkness, living the two-faced, going undercover in the world and coming back and acting like on Sunday everything's okay. No, this is a pure, unadulterated lifestyle, 24-7. See me at Target. See me at Winco. See me at the car wash see me in the pulpit same pure heart mind and spirit why because i love god and i build my life around that relationship Mm. come on i gotta say that's good preaching don't you think i gotta get back to my first love Let me go back to Peter for a moment, and we'll kind of wind up. On the beach, Jesus renewed his commitment to Peter and gave Peter a, a second chance. With God, everything is possible, and there's always a way to bounce back. Okay, This always gives you a second chance. And I've seen pastoring long enough, sometimes it gives fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth chances. You know what we call that? That's called grace. That's called mercy. And so I'm telling you about a merciful God. Why do you tell me that? Because maybe you've drifted from your first love. You left it, as the scripture says. And it's not number one anymore. then you know what, God, I need another chance. L- let me see if I can figure this out and do it better. And, and I think here the takeaway that it's no mistake that Jesus addresses Peter three times and asks him, do you love me? My takeaway here is that three times would be an appropriate number since Peter had denied him three times. So let me ask your spirit this morning. Do you love Jesus? Just let your spirit and your heart talk. Have you drifted? Have you migrated? Again, I know we love Jesus. I know we love God. But my my, my title here, watch this. It's not a question. It's just simply one word renewed do you need a renewed spirit i love god i'm not we're not going there i'm not asking that question did you leave your first love these are just questions for your soul there's no sin in my life we're not talking about sin 
I'm here listening to you in person, aren't I? I could be streaming online. We're not talking about online streaming. We're talking about a renewed love. When we're here on Sunday, we all look like our love has been renewed, but hey, what about the week you live? What about how you come and go, you talk, your attitude, your spirit, your thoughts? What about your playlist? What about the websites? What about the clicks of the mouse? What about the attitude? See, that's invisible to man. But those things aren't invisible to the Holy Spirit. I think without a doubt, my friend, including myself, God, I need a renewed love. I feel like you're the center. I feel like I build around you. I feel like you're the sun in my solar system, but I just want to make sure, God. Have you ever, something was a little weird or awkward, have you ever done this? Hey, Brother Tony, we're good, right? I just want to make sure there's no weirdness. Brother Foster, we're, we're, right? If, if you think, you know what? I don't, I don't know, that was kind of weird. And because we value a relationship, we go to them and say, hey, we're good, right? Right, there's, is there anything that I did or said or I don't want nothing between us. We're good, right? You see, when we're not quite sure in the natural, if we love someone, we go to them. Hey, babe, we okay? You good? We're good, right? Why are you acting weird? Why do you say... When I, what's wrong? Why do you say nothing and look out the window? What relationship wouldn't benefit in that case if you reached over and you said, honey, we're okay, right? Yeah, babe, why? I just want to make sure nothing ever gets between us. <laughs> and if there was something between you, it would have melted right then. What are you doing? It's a pure heart communicating with someone that I love so much. Now what about God? God, We're good, right, God? Are you pleased with my lifestyle? Am I making the right decisions? I'm trying to raise the kids right. Have I erred somewhere, Lord? We're we're good, right? I I, I still love you. I, I, I feel like you're first in my life, but God, what do you see? What do you think? And we're reaching over, kind of tapping God. We're, we're good, right, God? You see, when I, if I reach out to and say, babe, we're good, right? We're not, I'm not asking, are we married? I, I'm not asking, am I saved? I'm just saying, God, because i got to renew my love. And if I've done anything to fracture that, it's incumbent upon me. God, we're good, right? I'm going to come down on a Friday night. God, I'm going to make sure. I'm going to join the prayer team, and I'm going to get on holy. God, we're good, right? Because I feel like there's a little weirdness going on, and maybe it's in my head, but I don't want, I don't want to be like Revelation 2-4. What are you trying to do? I'm just trying to renew my love. I thought, your love, I thought it was okay, too, but I'm just making sure. We're, we're playing for keeps, folks. We're playing for keeps. The same way God renewed Peter. Maybe there's been some environments in your life that you lashed out like Peter. Different, similar, but under the banner of I lashed out. I was in a dark spot. I wasn't myself. I wish I didn't do that. I wish I wouldn't have said that. I wish I wouldn't have reacted like that. And Peter and Jesus come back together and he restores the love and Peter steps up on the day of Pentecost and he begins to preach the new birth experience here's my point the second love, the second chance but Jesus and Peter got back together and made it right and how many among us there's some things we need to talk to God about because wow, God in the busyness I just kind of drifted and floated off out of my lane. I think I need a renewing. And God's saying, hey, I, I want to bless you. I want to anoint you again. I want to bring fresh oil into your life. I'm so glad you're here. It's called a renewed love.
Could you stand with me this morning, please? Again. I think the takeaway here is the one word. First word on the third line, left. Backslidden, we're not talking about that. Living a worldly, ungodly, double life? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you first fell in love with Jesus. Talking about how excited you were, how overwhelmed you were, how much you loved church, how much you loved the things of God. We're just focused on the one word left. That's all you got to reconcile today, one word. And I know God will help us, and our church will be better because we're all coming back and say, God, I need a renewed love. Let me pray for us. I'll open the altars. The prayer team, the ministry team will help and anoint you. If you come down today and you pray, maybe the prayer is, hey, before you anoint me, will you just help me get back to my first love? Maybe that's the prayer. Non-threatening. It's not condescending. It's not embarrassing. So I tell God, God, don't let me leave my first love. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray for every heart and mind here that the word of God, Lord, would resonate and we would assess and inventory our solar system, our life, and that we would come to you as Peter did and you went to Peter and reconciled and you forgave and you used him mightily and he proved he did love you God but he was in a dark place and he was in unpredictable times but I pray God if there's anybody listening to me today that identifies with Peter that Lord will reassess and renew our love our first love the priority of who I am and the future of my family, Lord. I bring these things back into alignment of the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And let your Spirit lead and guide me, God, and help my spouse and my kids that we would be a household that have renewed our love throughout. Bless the hearer today, mighty God. Bless the family, the guests. Bless every soul in this house. In the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer of anointing. In Jesus' name we do this. Amen and amen. Altars are open, my friend. If you want to be anointed, please come. That's not confessing to anything. That's not condescending. Lord, one more anointing. I I, I hear your voice. I just, just anoint me, God. I love you so much. If... Are we, we're good. Are we good, God? Everything's okay? I didn't say the wrong thing. I didn't react differently. We're good, right, God? Ha. Huh. Jesus. Jesus. In your name, God, minister and touch. The Spirit of God is upon us to preach the gospel to bring deliverance to the captive, to set free them that are bound. The Spirit of God is upon us today. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Renew me, God. Reorganize my solar system. Reorganize my thoughts. Reorganize my energy, God. Hey. Yes.
Thank you. 